What's up guys, Zach from Mark Customs and today's the day where I finally start resurrecting this flathead engine. Alright, so the game plan. Drain the oil. Pay really close attention to it, see what comes out. Hopefully no water comes out. On the dipstick, it doesn't look like there's any, uh, but just want to be safe. The story behind this engine is running, driving engine, no problems. Was pulled out, to put in a white block, so it's been sitting dry like this for a while, uh, supposedly a year. Uh, so I just want to double check everything because I don't want to try starting it up and actually ruining a good engine. Um, while that's draining, I'm going to clean up the top of it, and I'm going to pull the intake and see what kind of sludge we have down inside the motor intake gasket no problem uh, replaceable then uh, I might pull the spark plugs out and put a little bit of oil in each cylinder just in case look at this huge ass drain plug I don't even have a wrench this big I have to put a pipe wrench on it hopefully what comes out is nice beautiful oil oh yeah there's sludge in that engine hole this big it should be pouring out right now sludge maybe not it's not that much oil in there all right so if you're not familiar with flatheads uh, their drain plug is huge look how big that thing is um, so I crawled up underneath the, uh, the oil pan with my flashlight um, from the drain plug you can see the oil screen um, on the oil pump uh, you can see one main kind of a little bit of the second main or the rear main and you can see a couple of rods and when I was looking up in there, everything is super clean. Um, usually on a high mile engine, um, the rods are black. Um, they're kind of been heated with oil in there for a long time. These rods look like they haven't had that much miles on them. Um, I couldn't see any sludge anywhere, like how on the top I was surprised. On the bottom, I'm also surprised. And now I'm starting to think I don't want to waste my time um, dropping the oil pan. Um, usually when someone says, oh, it was running not very long ago, you take it with a grain of salt and you're like, yeah, we'll see. But um, so far on this one, I'm starting to believe it. I think I'm just not gonna drop the old pin and just keep moving on. All right, so the engine didn't have any oil in it, which just kind of concerns me. Um, what if there was bearings in the oil? So they drained it all out and sold it to my buddy, uh, hoping that he would never find out um, or that he wouldn't find out initially. Hopefully that's not the case. What little came out actually looked like good oil. Um, I mean, used, not brand new. So no one's hopefully not trying to uh, hide something from us. So let's take the intake off and see. Hopefully we find some good, good information. <laughs> I see zero sludge, zero. I see a lead intake gasket that tells me someone built this right. This engine's built right. This looks good. I'm happy with this so far. Um, if this engine has old school valves, I'll be even more impressed. I don't know if I even want to take this all the way off. This is, might still be usable. That's why I like the lead ones. It'd still be a usable gasket. Let's clean it up. They smash down so nicely. Be careful taking it off. Now what I'd really, really, really like to see is the uh, APA style valves in it. Uh, the early valves are mushroom on the on the bottom. They have a split valve guide. The later valves 
have a solid valve guide. And that sounds so much nicer already. And modern keepers in the bottom as well. So we'll uh, pry one up and see what we're working with. Okay, so I get my tool and pry it up. I see that it is a mushroomed valve, so I mean, that's not a bad thing. The mushroom valves just can't handle as much horsepower as the ones with the modern style keepers on them. So keep that in mind if you're building a flathead. Uh, spend the extra money to get the uh, more modern style ABA valves. All right, so, so far this engine's looking way better than I expected. The oil valley, there's like minimum, minimum, minimum uh, build up in there. Something that you'd see on a running engine. You take it off to put an intake gasket on it real quick. That's the kind of sludge you see in there, like basically nothing. Uh, super happy about that. I'm going to vacuum up the area around the intake really good. I'm going to razor it. Then I'm going to razor the actual intake. I'm going to put it back on and keep going. I'm really happy with what I'm seeing so far. Um, what I want to do before I put the intake on is pull the spark plugs out, put a little oil in the cylinders just to be safe. Uh, then. After that sits for a little while, maybe tomorrow, I'm gonna to turn the, the crank fully over by hand, a full repetition, uh, two repetitions actually. I wanna make sure none of the valves are stuck. The valve is floating, I wanna find that out now, and not when I'm trying to get it to idle. Ooh, what's wrong with it? Why is it, why is it not um, starting up very well? That's something you wanna check right now, so it's a good time I can visually see all the lifters, everything that's going on inside. Even the spark plugs look decent. Um, it looks a little fouled out. Maybe they're running it too rich. But there's the dielectric grease on the tip of the spark plug. Okay, someone's taking good care of this engine. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull these spark plug. Uh, I'm gonna pull it out. I'm gonna clean it up a little bit with, uh, I just use my little belt here so I can slide the spark plug back and forth. Clean up the spark plug with 240 grit and put a little oil down in each cylinder. Um, I'd rather burn up some plugs and have to pull them back out instead of uh, having some stuck piston rings, worst case scenario. Uh, the motor is free, but I'm just trying to be super careful with everything. <clears throat> Alright, so what I have here is World Purple 1540. I put a dab in each little cylinder hole, a little, little, little tiny amount. Um, the problem with flatheads is that the spark plug is actually over the valves, not over the piston. So I don't want to just dump this in here. I might just be pouring oil into my exhaust, which is just kind of retarded. Um, then obviously when I actually fill the engine up, I'm going to put this oil treatment in there. I like using STP, it's got zinc additive. And now I'm gonna fill up my little cup of oil in here. Um, I'm gonna put it on all the lifters, uh, make sure I get oil down, hopefully to the cam. And uh, this is the point where I'm gonna actually get real heavy on using my uh, zinc additive. Uh, I'm gonna put, make sure that gets on all the lifters too. All right, so I put this back in. So if uh, you're not a flathead aficionado, you can kind of see what we got going on here. Uh, this is the lifter. This is a lifter for the fuel pump and it contacts directly a, a lobe on the back of the cam. So this lobe's up and down. So when I take this out, I can put oil directly into the cam, or at least on the rear of the cam. So I'm gonna put some in there now. I'm gonna go ahead and put my zinc treatment in there and put oil pan. Stuff is thick like molasses. So now that I have a completely full oil, I got my zinc in there. Uh, I feel a lot more comfortable with actually turning the engine over by hand. Um, just to make sure nothing's stuck. Uh, now what I'm going to look at is, I'm gonna turn it over quite a few times, and I'm gonna look at all my lifters, make sure all my lifters are moving, and make sure my valves recess back down after being pressed up. I wanna make sure the valves aren't actually stuck in the valve guides. <laughs> I got the transmission gear.
But then it looks nice and free. Every valve came up, every valve went down. What's up guys, Zach from Wire Customs, and today I'm going to show you how to rebuild a Model 94 carburetor. So it started up. I'm super happy, super stoked about that. Um, I pre-filled the bowl full of gasoline. And when I started up, uh, I ran to open my garage door so I didn't suffocate in here. Uh, and I just ran out of fuel, so that's a really good sign. I came back and wiggled it and uh, the squirters weren't squirting any more fuel out. So pretty much just ate all the fuel. Um, so now I gotta hook up my fuel lines and actually get this thing tuned and ready to drive around the town. So it's pretty exciting. Uh, if you enjoyed this little video of me uh, working on the engine, just like it, say something in the comments. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask away. Uh, I, love com uh, I love having a conversation in the comments. And uh, now it's time for me to get my shift together. So thank you for watching.